Santene Sana, and thank you very much for your comments and your words of encouragement. To the people of Kenya, this is a momentous occasion for our country. Our politics and our elections have never failed to be emotive, engaging, and dramatic. The most recent installment, however, showcased our most exemplary democratic performance. This day comes on the back of a peaceful election following an intense issue-based campaign in which major coalitions made up of strong political parties canvassed their agenda and took it for examination by the people of Kenya. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission stewarded a transparent and credible election whose result faithfully reflects the democratic will of the people of Kenya. Dissatisfied parties exercise their right to petition before the Supreme Court, whose proceedings and determination not only gave comfort to the doubtful, but also restored faith in our electoral and judicial institutions. Many countries aspire to have moments like this, and we as Kenyans should not take ours for granted. This is the third election under the Constitution of Kenya 2010 and the second peaceful transition. We have had a robust conversation about this moment and what it demands of us. And we have sought to answer the question whether this is a constitutional moment or an economic moment. In this process, we have demonstrated the maturity of our democracy, the robustness of our institutions, and the resilience of the Kenyan people. My competitors and I mobilized vigorously to offer the citizens of Kenya the most appealing agenda as well as the best roadmap to achieving it. I remain firm in the conviction that all sides in the last election did their best to present a pathway to actualize the people's aspirations. The just concluded election was a choice between competing ideas towards the Kenya we want. Elections and democracy entail unifying competition, not divisive rivalry. The performance of our security services, the performance of the IEBC, and the judiciary was put to severe test. By and large, these institutions lived up to our expectations. We can only aspire to do better in future, and I give my undertaking that my administration shall work to ensure that the bar is raised even higher for the next general elections. A significant dividend of our electoral and democratic process is the tremendous achievement we made in breaking the glass ceiling by enhancing the participation of women in leadership. Seven women were elected as governors up from three in the last election. 29 women were elected as members of the National Assembly up from 23 in 2017. Seven women deputy governors and three women senators were elected as well. It is very clear that this election had many winners, far exceeding those who were actually elected. By far, Sorry, by far the largest winners of this election is the people of Kenya. We have done well as a nation. We have blazed the trail 
in an increasingly challenging environment where democracy is consistently on trial. We have come a long way in our nation's journey to freedom and going by our most recent performance in these elections, we conclude in confidence that we are almost home. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to single out the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission for special commendation for the courage to do the right thing under exceptionally challenging circumstances. As an institution, they have set a new standard in public service that is uncompromising, professional, and exemplary while raising the bar of integrity of our public officials and public institutions. It is appropriate to single out for special mention the chair of the IEBC, Wafula Chebukati, for standing firm, resisting bribery, resisting intimidation, and resisting blackmail, and doing the right thing. It is also appropriate to celebrate our judiciary for sustaining its tradition of boldly giving much-needed guidance, especially in allaying post-election anxieties and resolving grievances in a sensitive, credible, and authoritative manner. Judiciary's articulation of the aspirations and standards enshrined in the Constitution has deepened our democracy and institutionalized our rule of law. Our judiciary is now, without a doubt, Kenya's biggest constitutional dividend. The judiciary has successfully arbitrated three election disputes and defended the nation against formidable onslaughts on our Constitution. Our judiciary has demonstrated transparency in its proceedings and decision-making, thereby consolidating its independence, authority, and legitimacy. I also take this opportunity to say a special word of appreciation to our security services for a commendable job at a critical moment in our nation. Their services and heroic sacrifices they have made beyond the call of duty has kept our nation safe. I am aware that our uniformed services effectively resisted concerted attempts to foment unrest and subvert the will of the people. My special commendation also goes to all our candidates who contested various positions. Their participation enhanced competition and enriched public debate that underpins democratic choice.